What is up everybody? Back with another discography ranking here today and it's going to be Iron Maiden. Yes, I already did this one about a year ago, but the video recently got copyrighted due to me using a clip from Live After Death, their uh, live album concert from 1985. Used like a 12 second clip from that video and it was able to stay up for like a year, but just now I guess they found a problem with it. Um, I don't make money, I don't profit from these videos, so I don't really get the issue. But um, video's taken down from YouTube, so we got to redo it. Gonna do it old school here, no stopping. Gonna talk all the way through, show each album as I go. I've got all of them except for one, but um, just my opinion as usual, so gonna get started with it here. Number 16 is gonna be Virtual 11, their 1998 album, the last one with Blaze Bailey. Um, so the last one before Bruce Dickinson and Adrian Smith came back. So at this point, they just had Dave Murray and Yannick Gares on guitar. Both great, just overall, you know, the music on some of this is pretty good, but as I've said before, I don't really think Blaze fits the band too well. Future Reel, opening song, really good though. Love the um, melody of it, the guitar works great. And um, the only other standout for me on this one is probably The Klansman. Some other decent moments in there, but overall, pretty forgettable album for me. I know there's some people that love the Blaze stuff. That's cool, but not me. So obviously my number 15 is gonna have to be The X Factor. Um, this is not the original cover, but here's the CD right here. Came out in 1995. Some okay stuff on here. Sign of the Cross isn't bad. Lord of the Flies, Man on the Edge. So, I mean, it's, it's an okay album. Just, again, overall, um, a lot of the other stuff is much, much better. And, again, don't love the vocals from Blaze Bailey. So that is my number 15, The X Factor. Now here is where most a lot of the list is kind of the same if you remember my list from before some of them maybe have switched around a spot or two but um just like last time my number 14 is gonna have to be brave new world yeah some people probably disagree with that that's cool but for me there's two songs on here that i really like think are awesome ghost of the navigator and the title track but besides that a lot of the songs you know they're they're not bad but just for me they're a little uh a little lacking, don't really stand out too much for me, but it is cool that Bruce Dickinson and Adrian Smith came back to the band. They've been there again, or they've been there since then. So back for over 20 years now. Uh, the Wicker Man wants to be Running Wild by Judas Priest so bad, but um, a decent album here. I give it about a six out of 10. So don't hate it by any means, but it is my number 14. Now my number uh, 13 is gonna be the latest album. The Book of Souls, got it right here. Cool gatefold opening, some really amazing artwork within this album. I'm gonna show here, got the guys there. I did see this tour, 2017 in Nashville, Tennessee. The album came out in 2015, so toured it for a while. And looking at these songs, uh, this album is, is pretty good. Just like one of the main criticisms of it is that it drug on for too long. I think it's like 90 minutes long or something like that. The Red and the Black is pretty cool. Um, the opening song, If Eternity Should Fail, is pretty good. Um, looking through the rest, the title track I think is really good. But um, yeah, I'll try to list like three, three or so songs from each album so I won't spend too much time on them. But uh, Bruce Dickinson's voice still sounds good. Uh, the opening of the concert was If Eternity Should Fail. He does, it's just like him singing. It's got like trumpets in the back or whatever the heck that is, but cool intro, um, great artwork, not a bad album at all. It's about a seven out of 10. So the rest of these albums I do enjoy quite a bit. It's just a matter of personal preference. Where are you gonna put them? But um, so that was my number 13. Number 12 is gonna be The Final Frontier. Got the CD right here, which I actually just picked up not too long ago. I've seen some people hating on this album. Some people say it's awful, their worst album by far. I uh, think it's pretty good. Satellite 15, Final Frontier, really cool, kind of unique song. Um, just really, really a unique song, actually. Good one. El Dorado's got a great riff. And um, another one that I really like on here is The Alchemist. That's really nice, kind of dueling, melodic intro there. Really, really awesome stuff. Broken CD right here, but uh, yeah, not a bad album at all. Again, 7.8. I don't know if I'm gonna give ratings for all these, but in the 7.5 out of 10 range for sure. And that is my number 12, Final Frontier. Now my number 11, again, I think this was the same last time, but I'm gonna go with Killers at number 11. Um, I'm not the biggest punk fan ever, and there's clear, obvious punk influence on this album, especially a bit more than the debut, I think, but 
This one I do like more than I did originally. Uh, Wrath Child, of course, great classic song. Um, Purgatory is awesome. And probably uh, the title track are my favorites on here, but um, this is the first with Adrian Smith, which is cool. The last with Paul Diano. They're not the original vocalist, but the guy who sang on their first, first two albums. They had like three or four vocalists before him um, from like 75 to whenever Paul joined the band, but good album here. I know some people probably think it's uh, their best. That's cool. Again, Iron Maiden's a band where I really wouldn't be surprised if someone has my number 11 at number one. They're just a band with a lot of good albums. So Killers, number 11. My number 10 is gonna be the debut. Came out in 1980, Killers 81. So this one, again, you got Paul Diano on vocals. You got Dennis Stratton on lead guitar alongside Dave Murray. Uh, this was before Adrian joined the band. Um, and uh, yeah, good album here. Prowler, amazing opening song. Um, I really, really like Transylvania. Great melodic um, instrumental song. Awesome stuff in the title track. So some really, really great songs on here. Strong, solid debut. And um, yeah, just really good album. Self-titled, 1980. Now my next up at number nine. Got, got all these right here. But um, number nine, I'm going to go with A Matter of Life and Death. Came out in 2006. Really cool album. Love the cover. Much better than the uh, previous release, 2003, um, Dance of Death. That album cover's terrible. This one I think is really cool. Uh, the obvious war theme, some of the songs to do with that as well, a lot of them. But uh, my favorite song on here easily is Lord of Light. Really dark, awesome intro there to that song. Looking at the rest of these, These Colors Don't Run is awesome. Um, the Pilgrim's great. The Longest Day, a lot of good stuff on here. The Reincarnation of Benjamin Brieg. Really cool album, Matter of Life and Death, number nine. Number eight, I'm gonna go with Dance of Death. This one, I think, is a really good album. As I said before, um, the album cover is awful, but looking at these songs, there's a lot of cool stuff. Rainmaker is awesome, in my opinion. Um, no More Lies is pretty good. Montsegur, uh, title track's cool. Face in the Sand, really great overlooked song. Passchendaele, that's one of their best songs of the 2000s. And that's another thing with Iron Maiden. A lot of people sh just completely shit on their um, 2000s material, say it sucks. I disagree. I think a lot of the stuff's really good, including this album here, even though it's at number nine, or we had number eight. We're at number eight right now. So my number eight, uh, I think it's really good. Dance of Death. Not looking at any uh, uh, notes to keep in order, so gotta learn how to count. But number seven... Yeah, my number seven is going to be Fear of the Dark. Great album, 1992. This was the last with Bruce Dickinson. For a little while, he left, obviously. Did some solo stuff, then came back. But um, Be Quicker, Be Dead, really good opening song. Pretty upbeat, borderline uh, thrash, if you want to call it. But good stuff there. Judas Be My Guide's an amazing melodic one. Amazing guitar work throughout that. Of course, the title track is a staple in their set. They always play that one. Um, Childhood's End is another one that I love. But uh, yeah, great album here. Fear of the Dark, my number seven. Now, number six. One second. I'm going to go. Make sure I got these in order. Number six. Am I at number six right now? Yeah, my number six. I'm going to go with um, Seven Son of a Seventh Son. I was looking around because that's actually the one I don't have. So my number six is Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Really good album, came out in 1988. Uh, of course, it's kind of more of the, um, they add in uh, like the synth, uh, symphonic elements. Um, really not, not symphonic, but like synthesizers, all that stuff that started with um, Somewhere in Time, which I really like. Um, you know, favorite songs on here, I'm not looking at them, but Moonchild for sure. Um, Only the Good Die Young, and I'd probably say The Evil That Men Do. Really awesome stuff. It's the last one with Adrian Smith. For a while, he left after this to go do some other stuff. But great album, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son, number six. And my number five, surprisingly to some people, but I'm keeping it here, which is what I had in my previous video, No Prayer for the Dying. Really good overlooked album, I think. Um, got the guys there. A lot of cool songs on here. Uh, Tail Gunner's great, Holy Smoke. The Assassin is awesome, Public Enema number one. Uh, Mother Russia, Hooks and You, 
Run Silent, Run Deep. Really, uh, most of these songs I think are good. Criminally overlooked album, underrated album, disrespected album that I think uh, is a lot better than, uh, maybe if you haven't listened to it in a while, go back because uh, it's really not bad at all. First one with Yannick Gares on guitar. Everybody in the band, great performances. Steve Harris, haven't mentioned his name yet, but he's obviously a beast, writes a lot of the material. Dickinson on vocals, sounds awesome. Nico McBrain on the drums. So um, yeah, good album here. My number five, No Prayer for the Dying. My number four is gonna be um, this one. These two switched since the last video. So my number four is gonna be Power Slave. Last time I had it at number three, but currently got it at number four. These top four, all amazing, so very tough to rank. Um, looking at the track listing, Ace is High, one of the best album openers of all time. Two Minutes to Midnight, such an amazing riff uh, to open up the album, or not the album, but open up that song. Um, let's see, Flash of the Blade, I think, is a really great, somewhat deep cut, if you want to call it. Very overlooked song. Uh, Back in the Village, that one's definitely, I'd say, a deep cut. The title track is awesome. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, the long, epic closer of the album. Awesome stuff here. 1984, Power Slave, my number four Iron Maiden album. Now, my number three, as of now, which did move up a spot, is going to be The Number of the Beast. Got it right here. Great album, um, killer stuff here. It's the uh, last one with Clive Burr on drums. Nico McBrain came along after this album, has been with them since, but um, Clive was a good drummer. People like to debate who they like better. Um, I like them both a lot, but I'd probably say Nico a bit for me, I like better, but um, looking at these songs, a lot of awesome stuff, the classic, amazing, Hallowed Be Thy Name, the title track, and uh, for me, I think Gangland's a criminally underrated song. I'd say it's probably my third favorite on here. But 22 Acacia Avenue is great. Um, Children of the Damned, of course. Really, all this stuff. This is a classic, classic album. For good reason. It's uh, awesome. It's the first with Bruce. Uh, Bruce, I love a lot better than uh, Paul Deano. So I think this was a massive step up in the vocal department as well there. But um, yeah, awesome album. The Number of the Beast, number three. Next up at number two is Peace of Mind, their 1983 album. Killer stuff here. It's the first with Nico McBrain on the drums. A lot of great songs. The Trooper, my favorite Iron Maiden song of all time, and I think it's one of the best metal songs ever made. I love everything about it. It's just one of those I could listen to a million times and never get tired of. Um, but the rest of the stuff, really great as well. Where Eagles Dare, Revelations, Die With Your Boots On, another favorite. Flight of Icarus is awesome. Side two, uh, I've seen some people say it's kind of weak. I disagree. You got the Trooper there. Then the rest of the songs, not some of their like more popular ones, but a lot of great overlooked stuff. Still Life, Quest for Fire, Sun and Steel, and To Tame a Land. I think most of that stuff's really good. But uh, overall, great album here. A classic, Peace of Mind, number two. And of course, the only one I haven't mentioned yet, my number one is going to be Somewhere in Time. Amazing album. It's been my favorite Iron Maiden album for as long as I can remember. Um, as I've said, it's the first of theirs with synthesizers, the guitar synthesizers. Some people didn't like that, but I think it sounds amazing. The production on here is fantastic. The bass sounds amazing. Really, everything on this album sounds amazing. All killer, no filler. Some great tracks on here. Caught Somewhere in Time, the opener, is awesome. Um, Wasted Years, of course, one of their most popular songs. It's great. Sea of Madness is awesome. Heaven Can Wait, the fourth track. The weakest on the album, I think, but still not bad. Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, of course, is an awesome one. Stranger in a Strange Land, another great one. Deja Vu, one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs of all time. I'd say it's in the top five. And the closing track, Alexander the Great. Great way to finish it off. Awesome song. Just uh, overall, amazing album here. Somewhere in Time, my number one Iron Maiden album. And uh, that does wrap up my ranking. <clears throat> As usual, I want to know what you guys thought. I want to see your ranking in the comments. If you want to just do top five, that's fine. If you want to rank all of them. I'd like to see it, but um, got some pretty cool stuff coming up. Um, end of the year lists, of course, top 10 albums, or probably gonna do maybe top 20 metal albums, maybe top 10 metal albums of uh, this year, maybe top 10 black metal albums of 2020, top 10 thrash metal albums of 2020. Got some stuff in the works, and of course, other older lists, top 10 of 97, 98, 99. Wanna do all those, so look out for that stuff. And as usual, thank you guys for watching. Till next time.